What is good, you two? Quinway basketball analysis coming to y'all with that quick analysis today. We're going to talk about my Boston Celtics versus Kevin Durant's Brooklyn Nets. And this series should be interesting as we have a team that has underachieved this year. Boston has went through a myriad of injuries and protocols and chaos this whole entire year. Kimba is healthy. Smart will be there. Fournier has been playing better of late. Tatum has really been on a scoring surge the last couple of weeks, and he's basically been unstoppable and guardable, especially when his three-point shot is going and he's finishing at the rim. His post-game still needs a lot of work, but he is big and he is mobile, so he can shoot over smaller guys and get them in trouble if he overwhelms them and gets enough space to be able to do it. Unfortunately, they won't have his all-star buddy Jalen Brown for this series, and I think that's incredibly um, hindering to this team as that gave them another great defender. That gave them another guy that can get his own shot and also be a um, a guy that can switch and guard multiple guys like Kyrie and James Harden. And it gave them a guy that can take over a game. We've seen Jalen Brown have big games this year, and I think that missing him completely and having no real replacement for him will be one of the biggest detriments in this series, just not having reliable guys. Kimba has been hot and cold. Marcus Smart really don't know offensively what you're going to get from him. Sometimes he looks like an all-star. Sometimes he looks like a role player. And he's basically been that his entire career. Defensively, they take a big hit losing Jalen Brown, too as that's another defender that you no longer have. Ervin Fournier has never been known as a great defender. He is a guy that has been hot and cold, too. His jump shot really makes and breaks him. If he's able to hit the floaters and the jumpers, he can be a 15, 20-point guy for you, and they're going to need that since he, he, he has to pick up the lack of you know offense that they have because of the void that – Jalen Brown will leave them, and Fournier was a big acquisition for him. He was supposed to be the guy that was going to give them more depth at the wing and another guy that can create his own shot and knock down shots but also have a little bit of playmaking. And we haven't seen it enough as he has been injured and stuff like that that have kept him out of a lot of games. But if they want to win this series or be competitive, he's going to have to be a double-digit scorer and a guy that can shoot above 36% from three if they want to have a legitimate chance of making this a, a series. Not only that, Kimba, this guy was just an all-star last year. He was just an all-NBA player, I believe, two years ago. He is a guy that is a big difference maker for this team because they do need his shot creation ability. They need him to be an aggressive, keeping the defense on balance, keeping them guessing, keeping them playing hard so guys can get in floor, floor to range, so guys can get open threes. But also, it allows the bigs to be able to get space so they can, you know, be able to finish around the rim or get to the rim and be able to be a dump off or, or live threat that can finish. And Robert Williams does need that. Um, as he's not a guy that has a legitimate offensive game. And, you know, not having a guy like Tice means they have to rely on other people to, to, to step up at that center position. And Tristan Thompson was a big acquisition for them coming into this season. He hasn't really been the player that they hoped that he would be, but he has also been a solid rotation player for them, being a decent rebounder and a guy that isn't afraid to bang. He will get up, he will get in you, he will come at you on the boards. And that's something that they lacked the last couple years, but that's something that he still does bring to the table at this point in his career. You also got to look at Peyton Pritchard. You know, he's going to play some minutes, and we know he's going to be relied on to be heady and being able to knock down shots and be able to hit the threes for Tatum when he gets double teamed or trapped. They're going to need guys that can make a quick decision, and Peyton Pritchard has shown that he can – do that. He has high IQ and he has shot making ability and he has range if he has to pull that thing a little further or, you know, hide out a little further to so the driving lanes and the ability for Jason Tatum to go one on one will be there. So that's important and, and they do need depth for Kimba. They need guys that can come in so he can get a break. Also, when we look at the Celtics, this team defensively and offensively, they have to be consistent. This team that they're going against will put bunches together. They will put runs together. 
and the Celtics will have to be able to respond. The Celtics will have to dig deep and find a way to fight each and every possession because they are devoid of talent. Not only that, they don't have enough offense. This team has been hit or miss every single game because I watch all of them um, this season. They have been hit or miss. They can get hot, they can go cold, and they can get stagnant where they just don't know where to go offensively. And you just can't do that with the Brooklyn Nets, who has Kevin Durant, one of the most unstoppable players that we have ever seen. James Harden, one of the most unstoppable players we ever seen. Kyrie Irving, one of the most unstoppable players that we ever seen. And the problem with that, you have to go against all three of them on the same court with guys like Joe Harris that can obliterate you from three if you leave them open. Not only that, you got Blake Griffin, who can hit threes and attack the paint and make passes and play a little bit in the post from time to time. You switch and get a smaller guy on them. Not only that, they have other guys that have been able to step up and, you know, resume good roles like Bruce Brown that is a, a good solid defender and a guy that attacks the glass so you have to keep an eye on him and pay attention to him because he will get out in transition he will do the backdoor cut he will get the offensive rebounds and that can be problematic for a team that's already struggling to score consistently through the year when they can't secure possessions or get stops when it matters most or when they need to stop the bleeding when Brooklyn potentially put it on them so I'm not going to go too much in debt with Brooklyn like I did with the Celtics because Brooklyn really shouldn't have much trouble with this team um, as they are currently constructed in the, the team that they have now. I do think that the, the Celtics could, you know, if they is hitting shots, they could make it competitive. They could make it fun. But ultimately, I just think if this team is healthy for the entire season, which goes both ways, Brooklyn should be able to put the Celtics away in, in at least four games. I, I don't know if the Celtics could win a game, even if Tatum goes off like he's shown that he's capable of doing and has done within the last month. It, it might not be enough just because they have guys that can cancel it out. They have two guys that can still cancel out one get Tatum game, and they still have one guy to cancel out Kimba while they still have role players. Jeff Green will be important too because he's going to have to be able to get boards. He's going to have to be able to knock down shots. He's going to have to be able to find them seams in the defense and find ways to keep the ball moving, find ways to you know make the right play, which he has shown all year that he can do that, um, um, and which is important. And, and then you look at DeAndre Jordan. This is a guy that doesn't really have to worry right now about the center position. And that's good for him. Him and Nicholas Claxton are not the, the, the defenders that you want. They're not the centers that you want in the current NBA. But they're not going to really be in a tough situation in this series. So expect them to be able to cover the paint. Expect them to be able to hang around there and then not be too much of a problem because they don't really have a space and center anymore in Boston, which means they can clog up the paint. They can help. They can rotate. They can make things ugly. We know that when Brooklyn is locked in and loaded, they can really blow you out. They can really overwhelm you. And that's a problem that Boston will have to, you know, overcome each and every game. If KD is locked in and Kyrie is playing like he has played all season, this team is going to really put it on the Celtics each and every night just because they just have so many ways to kill you and so many guys that can attack you that Boston just won't be able to keep up realistically. And that could be a big problem. Brooklyn should want to sweep. They should want to finish it off at least in five. So that way they can rest Harden. They can rest KD and, you know, be able to be at their peak performance going into the second round so they can make a potential run at a championship. They make the trade for Harden and they make all these moves so they can win the title. And getting rid of the Celtics should be kill mode for them we know that James Harden has his, his playoff struggles in big games but when you have two other guys and great role players around you you're not needed especially in this series to do those things like heavy lifting unless somebody goes down or takes a game off if this team plays up to their capabilities and, and play up to what they have done when they are healthy they should be able to finish this one off pretty easy I love my Celtics I'm proud of us for getting the play-in game. I'm proud of us for still showing some type of fight. 
I'm proud of us, you know, for, you know, through all the chaos and all the things that could have made this season even worse, we have still shown that we are a, a respectable team. The problem is we're going against one of the best teams, unfortunately, because we're seventh, and we just not up to par with them at this point, especially with guys being out, especially Jalen Brown, who will be tremendous in a series like this, but we don't have them at all. And we don't have no way to replace him, obviously. So I, I got Nets in four. Um, I think KD has fun. I think Harden has fun. I think Kyrie should be pretty, you know, good in this series. And I just feel like they just have too much. And I feel like they have too much firepower. And I just don't see how Boston, the way they have played, can keep up with a team like Brooklyn. If they're going to have opportunities. They're going to have chances. But will they be able to put up stretches and stretches of scoring on the Nets? And if not, this one can be a double-digit lead every game finished by the Brooklyn Nets if they don't. Other than that, I'll be back with another video tomorrow. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of y'all day. Quinn Wade, Basketball Analysis. I'm going.